our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now my question to you is, what are you looking for? Why are you here this morning? Some of you are here because someone dragged, drug you here. Someone woke you up and said, you need to get up and get dressed because you're going to church. Right? Which... My kids say, we're coming to church, and I say, you can't go to church, you come to worship. But I wonder why you're here. We're, most of us are probably here, something about this resurrection, about this guy who died on Friday, was laid in a tomb, and now all of a sudden he's alive, right? And that's really easy for all of us to understand. Right? It's easy to just completely comprehend that. Jesus died on Friday, they took him off the cross, they laid him in a tomb, and now here Sunday morning, they go to the tomb to see him, and he's not there. And we're all just supposed to just magically understand what happened here. And here's, here's your allowance or your permission to sometimes say, I don't get all this stuff that Jesus says, and all this stuff that God says. Which probably isn't what you thought you were going to get when you came here this morning, right? We came expecting something. Whether we see that or not, Christ is going to be made known. But here's your permission to say, sometimes I don't get it. Because it's right there in the text. Did you hear it when she read it? Mary got up early that morning. She went to the tomb and she looked... She was going to go to see Jesus. She was going to go weep and mourn because that was the custom. She got there and the stone was rolled away. So she ran back. She went and got two of the disciples. She went and she got Peter. And she got the one who Jesus loves. Do you know why there's a disciple in the Gospel of John named the one who Jesus loved? Most people want to say that it's John because he had a big head, right? The guy who wrote the Gospel said, Jesus loved me most. So instead of calling myself John in my Gospel, I'm going to call myself the disciple that Jesus loved most. The disciple that Jesus loved. Do you know really why in the Gospel of John there's a disciple named the disciple who Jesus loved? Do you know who that disciple is? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. But these two get to the tomb and they get there. And the disciple that Jesus loves got there first and he peeked his head in and he looked and he didn't see Jesus. And then Peter got there and Peter went in and they saw the linen cloths. It's kind of like a progression, right? Jesus wasn't there. And then they saw the cloths. And then they saw some more. And they were so moved by the fact that Jesus was not there, they went out and told everybody in the world. Uh-uh. That's not what the story says. The story says that they went home. And that's it. And Mary stands there in the garden. Mary stands there in the garden weeping. She wonders what's going on. And she's takes a chance and peeks in the tomb and she sees two angels. And the angels ask her, woman, why are you weeping? She says, I don't know where they've taken him. And at that moment, she turns around and she sees somebody standing in the garden. And he, she assumes that this person is the gardener. She has no idea who it is, right? And we all wonder, how in the world can Mary not know? How in the world can Mary not see that that's Jesus? Well, right there is your permission, people. Mary didn't get it. And neither did Peter and John. Or, excuse me, the disciple that Jesus loved. <laughs> they didn't get it. So you know what? Sometimes when you say, I don't really get what God is doing here. <clears throat> you're in good company. You're right up there with Peter and John and all of the disciples and Mary. And everyone that walked this earth with Jesus. Because Mary turned around and saw this man who she thought was the gardener. And she said, if you've taken him, tell me where you've put him. He says, woman, why are you weeping and what are you looking for? She doesn't get it. She doesn't get it until he does what? Mary. And at that moment, the whole recognition comes on. And she runs up and she hugs him. He says, don't hold on to me, but go tell 
my brothers, go tell the disciples that I am ascending to my God and to your God, to my Father and to your Father. So, Mary went back to the disciples and said, I saw the empty tomb. Is that what she said? Mary went back to the disciples and said, Say loud. I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What's more important? The fact that the tomb is empty. The fact that Christ is risen. Or the fact that Mary has seen Jesus. Is it more important that Jesus rose? Or is it more important that he made himself known to other people? Because if Jesus had walked out of that tomb and left that tomb empty, that's no big thing. Because the tombs are empty all the time. I'm sorry, there's people called grave robbers and they go in and they take stuff out of tombs and leave tombs empty. Leave, they leave tombs empty. So an empty tomb could mean anything. And the fact that Jesus is risen means nothing to us if we haven't seen it. Have you seen it? If anybody says no, please come and see me after worship because I will help you understand how you've seen Jesus. We've all seen Jesus. Whether we think so or not. I'll tell you to look to your left, look to your right, and see in their eyes the face of Christ. Because he's here with us. He made himself known to Mary and he told Mary to go and tell the disciples that he was not in the tomb and that he was alive, right? That's what he said. That's not what he said. He said, go and tell my brothers. Go and tell the disciples that I am ascending, that I am going to my God and to your God, to my Father and to your Father, right? Right? When Jesus was standing there and Mary didn't know him, she, he said Mary. She turned around, grabbed hold of him and shouted the word Rabboni, which means teacher. teacher. It's more than just an acquaintance. It's more than just a, a, a saying hello. It's a signification that there is a relationship between this man and this woman. That there is a relationship here that goes deeper than just being friends. And she also at that moment not only claims that relationship, but she claims to be something more than most people would say that she is. If Jesus is her teacher, she is his disciple. disciple. There's a relationship there. And when Jesus tells Mary that she needs to go tell the disciples, she needs to go tell my brothers that I am ascending. And he's ascending where? To my God and to your God, to my Father and to your Father. It's a continuation. You see, the most important thing this morning is not the empty tomb. It's not the fact that Christ is risen. It's the fact that Christ rose, came to each and every one of us and said, you are still my beloved child. We are in a relationship. It is a two-way thing. And I am bringing you along with me. I am going back to where I came from. I'm going back to my God and your God. I'm going back to my Father and to your Father. And that relationship that I have with the Father is now not just my relationship, but it is also yours. You see, Christ died on that cross so that He could redeem us from our sins. And then He walked out of that tomb to give us an eternal life, a life that is not only connected completely with Jesus, but completely with the Father who created each and every one of us. And that beloved disciple, by the way, we got back to that? See, you thought I was going to forget that, didn't you? Some of you did. Why is there a disciple in the Gospel of John who's only called the beloved disciple? For the same reason that the Gospel of Luke is written to the great Theophilus. Theophilus literally means lover of God. And in John, the disciple whom Jesus loved is unnamed, not because it is John, one of his disciples, but because it is you. You are the beloved disciple. You are the disciple that Jesus loves. You are the one that he went to the cross for. 
You are the one that he walked out of the tomb for. You are the one that he goes to the Father to prepare a place for and takes you with you and keeps you in that oneness that he has with God the Father. So go and be like Mary and go and tell all of the world that I have seen the Lord and he has come to show us all exactly how much love he has for all of us. 